I it's on my list anyway, and I wanted to talk about Alzheimer's okay, too. Okay, well, now's like, the time because I honestly, I, I've been interested in getting it, but I'm also like, the more I hear about it, the more I'm like, is this actually my kind of game? Because I I kind of this is what I do with games is I I don't really like to know a lot about games um, before I go into them. I like to be as blind as possible. So when I saw the first couple of gameplay footage bits because i was like watching this guy and he was like recommending it in a video i saw the gameplay and i was like this game looks amazing i and so i stopped consuming any content around it because i was like i'm just gonna get it later and experience it then but the more i learn about the game being like this real-time story that's unfolding it's like if i were to play the game two years from now would i actually be able to get the same experience or would i have missed out on the past two years of the story of the game unfolding with the ma the master controlling the events and you know like if they were to shut down the service uh, like let's say i played the game offline would that even be possible is it possible to play it offline like these are the questions i have i don't know um i don't know how it works so you can explain okay. it to me someone who doesn't know anything other than it's a game where you go to different planets as like soldier like space soldiers and you, you kill giant bugs and things that's all I know about it. All right. Are you ready for this, Logan? Yeah. I'm going to get into it. I'm ready. <laughs> Logan, have you ever wanted to spread democracy? Um... Have you ever felt <laughs> the smell of freedom in the form of bug guts splashing across your helmet? Actually, yeah. Because um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge Earth Defense Force fan, which Earth Defense Force is... Uh, if you mix a cheesy movie, like a really, really stupid cheesy movie with, you know, killing giant bugs and like an action shooter, that is what EDF is. And I've put in a lot of hours in EDF. So when I saw Hell Divers, it reminded me of okay, EDF so, the most. Man, you actually have tasted freedom in the form of yes, but, on your helmet. But the thing is, uh, Hell Divers looks a lot more, I don't know how to put it. It's like definitely more, l less cheesy, I would say. So it's like, it's got the same spirit of like, yeah, let's save the world and, you know, kill the bugs for, for the team and for everybody. But it's, it doesn't have the stupid. Oh, Logan, it's not it about just saving the world. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's not just about saving the world. Well, it's like the universe, it's about right? spreading democracy. Okay. Yeah. So what do you mean? Justice <laughs> and freedom. What do you mean by that? Cause like. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Elaborate. So, elaborate. Well, <laughs> that's just the that's the persona that everyone takes in in Hell Divers. Every person just goes into this super uh, patriotic thing where it's like, "Are you ready to spread freedom? Are you ready to die for the cause? Like, are you ready to this right. and that? Like, like the classic uh, war propaganda? Like, join the fight, be a soldier. You know, like for the like, and there's like an eagle screech and it's like, yeah, I, I kind of, I, I feel like I've seen actually some commercials about like joining the military and they're totally that kind of vibe. So it's, it's exactly that, but like on crack, almost to the point <laughs> right. of pretty much satire right. where it's, okay. I mean, you gotta know that you're fighting for super earth in, in this game where, right. okay. and I, I don't know much about if i wanted well like i guess there's not too much to spoil because i actually don't know too much of the lore myself i'll tell you how the game goes and, and so you can get a better understanding of that pretty much everyone you meet is like mega democracy it's just it's just a meme almost everyone um, you meet? everyone you meet everyone who plays it is of the similar mindset of like we gotta spread democracy with freedom and and just like that yeah, kind of okay. testosterone yes. thing like like super giga chad like let's we're cleansing the world for the, a better tomorrow like it does really it, the sense of camaraderie i feel like is huge um yes it is enormous yeah this game i will also say is like extremely anti-troll as in there was there's like some people that like kind of will troll if you start trolling people will find your account and just like oh, man not really 
extra bully you, but like they will go out of their way to make your own gaming gamer experience as miserable as you're trying to make it for everyone else. If yeah, that makes I mean, sense. Yeah, like you uh you mentioned you touched on this in our troll episode. Uh you were talking yeah, about how yeah. all divers is like a very non troll game. And that's why you were surprised to find somebody in the game that was trolling. Um, but anyways, yeah, uh, and I'm not gonna say it's like perfect in that regard. Sure, but like nothing can be. I feel like, yeah. Regardless, to say it's that's that the camaraderie is a strong point in its favor in the game. Well, the gameplay itself, because you were asking questions about it, and I wanted to. Uh, yeah, like, like the game structure is mainly what I'm curious about because I feel like the gameplay. I mean, you can get into it, but I. Uh, it see it seems it seems like a mission based game, and you know you land down on a planet and you take out like enemy, like bases and things. Um, I don't know if the game's open world. I don't know if all levels are available at the same time or like I I don't know how the game progresses at all. Like I have no idea. Like that's where I'm completely in the blind. What is the game okay. loop or game structure? Okay, so the game loop of democracy spreading. Um, when you log in, you're essentially taken to your super destroyer is what it's called. You get to name it. Uh, mine is the Lady of Victory. Oh, nice. So is it, is it a big it's ship? It's my ship. Is it a big ship or like a tiny ship? It's a uh, medium. Is You're able to call down something called stratagems you're able to call down like lasers and and extra special weapons and equipment and all that kind of stuff you're able to call that down from your super destroyer so it it's got a hangar and it has an eagle starfighter in the hangar so it's like oh dang it's got stuff but it's also not but, like but is it like the main uss enterprise or do you get to like walk around you gotta walk around you gotta oh, walk okay, around cool. your ship Cool. That's um, that's awesome. I love games that let you like, walk around your ship. The more you upgrade your ship, the more explorative oh, it is. Heck yeah. Okay. That sounds amazing. Uh, the, yeah. So, and of course, this game just came out. They are always adding new elements to the game. So, just a couple of weeks ago, we got um, exosuits, which are like max, basically. Right. And I'll tell you, getting these max. We had to fight for it. Like we, the community had to, they didn't just roll out the update as like, by the way, now you get suits. That's cool, right? They were like, hey, uh, we were making you suits, but the automatons have raided the planet where you were making the suits. So if you don't get that planet back within the next eight hours, they get the suits. They right, get the yeah. update. See, this is, this is the aspect of the game that I'm like really curious about. Because, like, how many planets are there, and, like, can they just be taken over at any point? If all the things are, like, let's say you have beaten all of the different factions at that time, is there no content to be played? You know? Like, no, how, how does that work? Is there a story mode? So, it's interesting, because you, you kind of are playing the story mode. It is kind of mission-based. In that you go from planet to planet. Each planet looks very different from the planet next to it. There are similar styles of planets. So like, oh, this one's really foresty. Or, oh, this one's kind of volcanic-y. But there is eight or nine different, maybe even more than that. I would say 10 or 12 different styles of planet. That And each planet does have its own name. And... When a planet is kind of active, I guess you could say, when it's being fought for, there you kind of you jump to a planet. You do your FTL jump, and when you dip in, when you slip in, am I even Englishing right now? You, yeah, I. Understand. How do I spreken's good? <laughs> I, I, uh, can I can understand what you're saying. I'm feeling just the freedom. So you you go in and you get to the planetary orbit and before you log into your ship because you can walk around you can look out the window and see every other super destroyer which means every single other player that's trying to conquer that planet with you mm, okay. you can see them all wait, wait, so wait, 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 what so ends up happening or is this before you land 
No, you're in orbit, so okay, you're still so in space. So it's in, in you orbit, see... you can see everybody. Okay. No, no. When you're down on the ship on on the planet, you also see everybody. Oh heck yeah! So when you're on the planet and someone calls down a laser, but they're in a different mission, they're in a territory miles away from you, but you'll see that laser. If someone no shoots an ICBM, you'll see that explosion. You'll see it all. Wow. Um, so like everyone, it's just not are... within. I don't know. So it's like, uh, cause this is reminding me of the, I don't know if you've played dark souls one. Um, but it's reminding me of an aspect in that game. That's really cool. Did you know, do you know about this? You know where I'm going with this or, uh, no, I don't. So in dark souls one, uh, the first substantial boss in the game is a pair of gargoyles. Um, and they're notoriously difficult for when you run into them. And you know, it's two V one it's dark souls. It's on a rooftop where you can get knocked off. Like people struggle with this boss if they've never played Dark Souls. Like if this is your first Dark Souls experience, like it's going to be pretty hard. But what's cool is that um, after you beat them, there's a bell tower because they're, they're guarding this bell tower and you, you go up the bell tower and you ring the bell and you, you find out later in the game why that's important. But uh, when you ring that bell, any because, you know, Dark Souls and Elden Ring and all that, all those games, they, they have the messaging system, you know, which already kind of makes the game feel connected there's that camaraderie feel because it's connecting the game with other players like your experience and other players experiences are like kind of in tandem with each other people are leaving messages to help you out and uh further the, yeah. further the game along right like but what's cool about this bell tower is that when you ring it anyone else that's playing the game will hear that bell ring and that means somebody beat the gargoyles so when you're if you're, if you're ever playing dark souls one and you hear that bell tower ring I mean, somebody just defeated those gargoyles and it's, it's a super oh, cool mechanic. Kinda... Yeah. Cause cool. like, you, especially if you've already beaten them, like you'll hear it and you're like, that's what I'm talking about. You know, like somebody else conquered th this hard part of the game. And uh, it sounds to me like that's kind of what's going on in hell divers where, you know, it's, you're inadvertently seeing what other players are accomplishing through these giant lasers and explosions while you're in a mission you can yeah, see them yep. off in the distance and know that somebody else is getting something done or that like, you're not in this alone, you know, like that's kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly how it goes. And it's well, awesome. So more games on, need to do that. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. It's, it's honestly one of the coolest things to see. Um, and to know that you're, you're part of a grand army that is trying to make a, or defend super earth as it's as it is so i will you had a question i wanted to circle back to uh, about if people like are gone permanently and what that means so far there are bugs so there are terminids and then there are automatons which, automatons, are, like, which are robots like androids yeah the robots so there are bots and bugs protoss, bots and bugs protoss from starcraft like that i guess <laughs> i don't know that reference unfortunately you don't know Protoss? i mean i it's the no maybe i'm pronouncing it wrong but in starcraft you have zerg which are like aliens you have humans and then you have protoss which are robots those are the three factions so. okay well you, people out so, there will sure, get it. I guess. you people understand protoss and uh, i need to uh, like what's the meme like i need to like construct additional pylons from I think that's from StarCraft. I'm uneducated in this subject, so I am going to move on. Let's uh okay. Well Thanks. you know the meme. Either way, so <laughs> far we have never fully taken out a faction. I don't know if that would ever happen. It's possible. That's what's interesting about this game, is every planet has a gauge next to it that you can go to that shows whether it's been liberated by us or by someone else. How much percentage of the planet is in control of the bots, bugs, or as humans? Now, uh, every planet in the game has a gauge. Every single planet, including Super Earth. How many are there? So, oh, there's got to be 80. 80 planets? Maybe 90. Yeah. 80? Wow. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it like a whole galaxy, or is it like multiple solar systems? Like, what's... Uh, there are... Fi Gosh, holy cow. <laughs> there are 253 planets. Wow, that's way more than you said. That's a lot of planets. Yeah, that is. 
that's a lot of planets. So yeah. all of these planets, we are constantly gaining control of planets and losing control of planets, especially because we're fighting a war on two fronts. Because on, on one side, uh, oh, okay, so I'll explain this real quick. You get uh, orders, like super orders from directly from Super Earth, which is essentially what the story is. Those super orders are from the game master guy Joel. He he makes them up, probably with a development team, I would imagine. But he's the one that kind of like oversees this. Yeah. And he says, "Hey, uh, the bugs—they're getting pretty close to this area. You should probably push them back. And if you do, there's this big reward. Well, you go, and it's not just you. These are hard orders. It would be impossible for you to capture a planet by yourself. It's." I'm talking tens of thousands of uh, yeah. hell divers. Yeah, that go and take these planets over the course of a couple days. Right, and then after a couple days, whether or not we complete those orders determines what happens next in the story. So, as an example, we were supposed to eradicate the bugs pretty much completely. There was a point where we had something called termicide, where we were they were. They were like special limited missions. I'm sure they'll bring them back. Um, but for the time, they were just kind of like limited missions where you had to go and activate these giant uh, monolith spire things that are, they were essentially genocide chemicals that you, once you activate them, you get the heck out of that area and it spreads and kills all of the bugs in that area just through gas. Kind of killing. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we, we did that super order. We we got that. Um, and it, because of that, we got a ton of like the in-game currency that you could use to buy gear and stuff. But then our next orders were, hey, do that, but at the next few planets, and you have half the time. And we tried. We tried. Like, holy crap, did we try to, to make it happen? And we couldn't. And the consequence of that is the Terminids survived. And so they're still there. We're still so that fighting the was, war against the Terminids. That was the game master being like, if you do this really, really hard thing, they will be gone. They will be done. Either gone or pushed back for a really long time. Because um, I, I this is something that's so interesting is yeah. we don't we haven't permanently seen too many like huge changes in the game yet, but they're coming. They're really close. In I'm talking like the potential of two or three or maybe even four who knows how many new factions will appear on the sectors and we just are like holy crap okay here, here's this new faction we gotta make yeah, this work because, i mean the game has been like super well regarded right like i have been hearing nothing but good things about hell divers too so i have faith that they can that they they have a plan and they know what they're doing and everything, but it does make me wonder from a game design standpoint, if like the whole idea of, if you do actually take out this race, they are gone, which would make sense for the story and the role playing and the, you know, like just like the whole point of winning the war in real time. Right. Cause like the game again, it's in real time. Like those guys would be gone. So it just makes me wonder from a game design standpoint, yep. like it would suck to make all these assets and make all these enemies for this game and for you to, for them to be gone. Like uh, from a game design standpoint, that doesn't make any sense. And then also it goes back to my question of if I were to play Helldivers 2 in two years, would I be able to experience any of this stuff? You know, so or would it, would it be answer your question news? on a lot of those things? I could answer. Well, so here's the thing. I think you would have to catch up on some of the things, but things will be happening. So as an example, in response, the the creators of the game almost are kind of the true villains, kind of like a DM in D&D, &D, and they have made it really hard for us to, to do certain things. And they've introduced things to make it almost impossible. I'm pretty sure that they're going to have a grand story to tell. They're just waiting for us to get to a certain point to tell it. As an example, uh, 
for that termer side thing mm-hmm. it, as a kind of one of the reasons that it made it so hard for us to get the thing after the termer sides and why we failed that for one because we got those new orders the the automatons invaded several of our planets so mm. while yes we had to get these new orders going these other planets now we we essentially had to accept losing ground to gain ground on the other side but and that's kind of how it's been the whole time but in order to make it really hard for us to gain any ground uh the bugs started flying they didn't fly before Oh, but okay. at, me and me and my I, me and my brothers were some of the first people to see it. Actually, we got to see it like a couple hours before the thing launched, because the main guy Joel he'll go into people's games and just spawn stuff just to see how they react. Oh man, um, that's crazy. And we're pretty we're pretty sure he spawned some of the newer bugs that have never been seen before. We had never seen them. Uh, we were just going through the planet. And I see something in the distance that's flying. And I think to myself, there is nothing that flies in this game. What could this possibly be? We're the only ones that fly. And it gets closer and it's a flying bug. And it's not just one, but it's like 40 of them flying in the air. And you know that line in The Rise of Skywalker of like, they fly now? Yeah. They fly now. Yeah. It's like and that, I, I that exact line is what went through my <laughs> Yeah, um, that was exactly what was going through my head, and we didn't know how to fight it. No one did. No one knew. They just came out of nowhere, and we were like, "Right, uh, like, is well, there okay. like, does the game update? Does it have patch notes? Could people data mine? Yeah, it there were flying does. enemies. People, people did probably data mine it, and there were people that probably were able to know, but they were just theories. Right. There were theories. There were like rumors of flying bugs right okay. but i didn't believe it until i saw it with my own eyes and they're like oh crap there are flying yeah bugs. or maybe they were unused right it's like oh they they thought about it but then they went against it for whatever reason and yeah and a, what's yeah, what's that's, cool that's really about cool. this is that it's always evolving and there are there are rumors so i'll tell you this now if yeah, trying to pitch the game to you um as we've been fighting the automaton threat much closer these last few days people have started to notice um hidden cloaked ships in the shadows of like planets and stuff you Uh-oh. can just see the outlines of the ships and they're ships that we recognize as a faction from helldivers one that Uh-oh. apparently we had defeated in helldivers one so there's the illuminids and the cyborgs we apparently had defeated the cyborgs what we're seeing some cloaked ships and also uh not only are we seeing those ships but we're starting to see dead remains of bugs of sizes that we had never even dreamed would be that size Dude, we're talking okay. like they have uh your super destroyer is probably smaller than this bug what no potentially no dude so yeah, that's because really we're cool. just that's like that's I, the, everything you're telling me is really impressive, but it still goes back to like, you know, I don't how long are they planning to keep this up? And you know, so it sounds to me like the game there isn't a campaign, but like what you're doing is part of like essentially the story that the game is telling is about everyone's like efforts to conquer these planets in real time on these servers that are being hosted and controlled by the team every day, you know, um, but it's just interesting, right? Cause like, it's totally a modern thing for the game to be this way. Um, but it, there is that part of me that's like, you know, if I popped this in my, you know, PS one or something, not, not that it would be for that, but like, the, you know the whole idea of like being able to play offline or whatever just doesn't seem to be possible with this game um yeah, i mean i don't know if you can technically play offline i have played it by myself a lot right do you so, queue up with other people or can you just go in by yourself you can do both so you could you could play publicly and just in squads of four go do your own thing 
But there are people who play on the very hardest difficulty by themselves, and they are honestly legends in by eyes because that's really hard to do. Yeah, but yeah. it's possible. Um, you can play by yourself. You can play with people. It's just it's up to you. Yeah, it it sounds. I mean, it sounds awesome. I've I've, I've I mean, I've been interested since I saw it. Um, but it does. It, there is that pressure where I feel like if I am missing out, like if I don't get it soon. I'm going to miss out on things. Um, so I guess I think it's a pro and a con because it's like, um, that means that like, I don't know, you know, it, cause like if I were to get into it now, it would be really enjoyable. Um, but it's also like, if I wanted to get into it later, I, I couldn't experience it the same way, you know, like, I there, think you, I think you would there. cause they're, they're still updating all the time. And they're adding stuff all the time. This game is still in its infancy, really. It came out in f February, I think. Yeah, so it's, it's only been it's out still for a couple pretty, months. It's pretty new still. The fact that I feel like people are still talking about it. Um, but it, it is starting, because who knows? Uh, all these updates might bring it back into the limelight again. But yeah, it's definitely been the hot topic amongst like so many people. You know, like, like wasn't there the the number of like, people playing on steam was like like the biggest number ever or was that a different game i don't know it was one of the biggest numbers of like consistent people playing at one time it was enormous it, it was definitely way higher than what the people what the creators thought yeah because be. the, the first game I, I heard of the first game but i never played it um and i doubt that the first game was as uh like intricate and like hands-on with the team and everything i don't know if it was real time or anything like it may have been made more of a mission-based game i don't know mm. but they well, definitely decided to release it at the perfect time yeah they sure did but you know i could i could sell this to you forever well uh, I'm talking that's about the thing is we literally cool started with weapons this are and stuff like that I, we started this conversation with I'm already interested. I just don't know how it works. Um, so uh, you don't have to sell me on any of it, really. You're just you're just nailing it home, you know, and you're uh, definitely explaining things to me that I did not understand at first. Because uh, it's yeah, I, I it was my impression when I first saw the game that it was just a mission based co-op PVE game. But it's like much more than that. And I think that's why it's doing so well. I think that's why so many people are resonating with it because it's this fresh new concept that is very polished, very well done. You know, it's interesting. It's, you know, it's fun to play. You can do it with friends. You can stream it. Like it's just, there's so much about the game that is good. In fact, I, I haven't really heard anyone say any negatives, honestly. So. Yeah. Um, I have I have almost no negative things. Of course, it's still it's, anything negative that I would have to say about it is simply because it's in its infancy, and they're just right. trying to learn. Okay, yeah. How hundreds of thousands of people interact with this? Yeah, especially because it's more than they they bargained for. So it's like they've probably been having to troubleshoot a lot of issues that they did not account for. Um, yeah, in a good way, right? Because this is just going to lead to more interesting stuff. But yeah, that's that's great. Um, I'm definitely going to have to pick it up. I guess the uh, the final question I have to ask, Logan, before sure. our, we yeah. get to our train. Are you ready to fight for democracy? <laughs> Dude, I was born ready, bro. I love shooting Enjoying giant bugs. Join the Helldivers. Shooting giant bugs, man. That's There's nothing like it. Uh... <laughs> Become a legend. It's, it's, Spread it's... manage democracy and freedom. In the name of Super Earth. It's crazy how, like, you know, uh, there's levels of humanity in, like, animals and in people and everything, you know? Like, we don't really want to harm living things, and, like, that extends to a lot of animals. And but it's like, bugs? Like, bro, who cares? <laughs> like, let's, I, I, mean, I want to kill all the bugs. Uh, like if the world didn't have mosquitoes, it would just be a better place. All right, let's just be honest with ourselves. So, um, I think bugs is definitely something people can get behind. It's true, like, absolutely. 
um which is just so weird right it's like are they even living things or are they just like organic robots i don't know very interesting but yeah uh very very interesting we got a train to catch so we'll see you guys next week for another in between on whatever it is we want to talk about farewell farewell